All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel for another Solana update. So it's been a little while since my last Solana update. What's going on in the short term? What's the price target for next week? What's the price target for the bear market low? Let's talk about all that and more in this episode. Let's jump right into the lower time frames. Well, starting off on the daily, if we clear this all up, I'll clear it up in a second. But as you can see on the 618 Fibonacci from your swing low to swing high, the most recent uptrend that we've been having today, we finally capitulated beneath the 618 Fibonacci. Bonacci. I've actually been waiting to make an update on Solana for the past week now while we've been reacting to the 618 Fibonacci. I know a couple of you have DM'd me asking me what I think of the price action and I've told a few of you I've been waiting for this particular level to play out over on the VPBRs, over on the Fibonacci's. We've broken beneath it today. So I think the next leg to the downside is in play right now. I wouldn't be betting on the price action over the weekend. As I always say, I disappear over the weekends. Weekends are not for trading. I like to have direction from the New York Stock Exchange. I like the DXY to be open. I like the SPY to be open. I like the SPX to be open. All of these tech stocks, I want all of them to be open while I'm trading crypto. Don't trade crypto over the weekend. So don't take this as this is going to happen Saturday, Sunday, tomorrow. This is what I'm saying is going to be playing out for the next week coming on on Monday. Well, we've, we're have we starting to push down beneath the 618 Fibonacci and I really don't think that we're going to be closing a daily candle body close above $34.42. However, what I will say is keep an eye on the weekly time frame because if we do close a weekly candle body close beneath 34.40, if we open our Monday uh, trading session below 34.40, uh, it's going to be curtains. You know, we're going to be done. We're going to be rocketing to these lower levels. Yes, you can say we do have a 786 Fibonacci here. However, I just don't think it would have too much weight in it, considering how quickly Bitcoin in the lower time frames is rocketing beneath all of its fibs. So, you know, we're finally going to start witnessing this sole BTC pair start to come back down. I'm going to talk about that in the latter half of the video. But if we do draw this out, uh, like I said, you know, some people have drawn this as a bull flag. Some people have drawn this as a rising wedge. There's an argument for both. Uh, but with the rising wedge, the price target of this in the immediate short term would be... Uh, that, well, there's always two different price targets for these. I like to look at the bottom of the trend. And as you can see, both of these are lining up pretty nicely. So I would say within the next week, the price target to expect next week for Solana is going to be coming down to this $26 region for a retest. Over on the VPVRs, you can see the major clusters were right here. And right here, this is where we did most of our trading in the past month or so for Solana. And we're falling beneath all of these VPVR pairs. So when we're looking at the daily time frame, you can see there's really not a big built out floor beneath us. So, you know, yes, if you are a fan of Fibonacci's, potentially you could be saying, hey, you know, let's not get uh, too ahead of ourselves. We can come down to our 786 Fibonacci at $30.60 and potentially have a bounce from there. And I would be in agreement with that. Potentially that is a level to hold over the weekend. However, coming into next week, that is what I think is going to happen. A little bit more lollygagging over the weekend. A lot of choppy price action considering how much volatility has been coming in. Don't expect uh, anything more than a lot more volatility to enter these markets. But with that being said, rising wedge is breaking down bear flag is breaking down we're falling beneath support over on the vpvrs i don't want to do a very very in-depth dive into the lower time frames because honestly i'm sure a lot of you have realized this people that have come to my channel from the past couple of months uh, i'm really not too interested at this moment in time in what is going to be going on tomorrow what's going to be happening sunday what's going to be happening in the next week for these altcoins uh, i really don't care i care where they bottom in the higher time frames when i think the bitcoin bear market is in when i think the old crane bear market lows are in i'm going to be updating you on my favorite cryptos like solana kda elon doge sheep uh eth ada etc etc the ones that i'm going to be buying i'll be letting you know what i think of those daily when the bear market low is in right now anything between a ten dollar solana uh and where we're at right now is noise so until we come down to ten dollars you know once again uh, I, I won't be updating this daily but i will be updating the macro moves let's zoom out so we've looked at the daily time frame not looking too hot over here i uh, will pick up some oscillators in a second Let's see, no, this is going to be easier to view over on this chart. Uh, what you can see is if we do head over to the weekly time frame, just like we can kind of see on the daily, this is your last region of support. Once again, this over on the weekly time frame is coming in at 32.60. So we previously said 32.40. So once again, 32.40, you know, there is no lower levels than that. Over on the VPVR, you can see if you do capitulate beneath this level, there are no volume profiles. Now, you might be wondering, 
why do I care about where the most volume profiles are? This just means the most amount of volume traded within a particular range that you're looking at. For this, we're looking at the visible range, which is the VPVR. If we were looking at something like the fixed range, we could pull more data from Solana. We could look back on here and we could see, you know, everything that's playing out. And as you can see, the major supports over on the fixed volume profiles that are to the left here at $15. And these also nicely line up with this major support down here. Uh, it's good to see that these are both in agreement on the trend, but nonetheless on the weekly time frame. Why is this important? Well, let me show you. On the all-time high, you had a breakdown, right? And you spent a couple of weeks, a month or two, lollygagging within this particular region, very much like what we just saw now. So you've got this breakdown, bear flag, lollygag, breakdown, bear flag, lollygag. And then when you have that inflection point is when the weekly really starts to tip down. This is the phase that we're in now and we're going to start rapidly heading down but in terms of the vpvrs and how this correlates to them let's look at the vpvrs in the previous trend so if we look at the top side of the screen here you can see these are kind of like the major volume profiles that we've got going on and you spent a lot of time trading within these volume profiles and there was no volume traded within this region i mean as you can see on the weekly time frame one two three weeks and we were blasting through this we spent absolutely no time building up support this was resistance here so we barely had any data traded when we went back down uh, so as you can imagine there was no data traded here so we slid for it like butter what's going to happen when we break beneath that 34 region that we were talking about well uh, as you can see looking at this, oh, it was 32.40 rather. But as you can see, there is no support over on the VPVR until at least down here at 15 to $16. And then there are major volume clusters between $10 and $8 down here, which is personally where I've really been predicting the bear market low is gonna be. So where I actually think Solana Bottoms is at the either at the start of this, uh, or sorry, let me rephrase that. Either at the bottom of this VPVR zone at $12, or at the bottom of this VPR, VV, VPVR zone at $8. So this green box that I'm going to mark for you, this is actually where I think we're going to be bottoming. So I expect something like this to be playing out. I do expect a bounce from these volume profiles at $16. I honestly wish I never saw these because it would make my life a lot simpler if I could just say, hey, the next final capitulation to the downside is going to be there. You know, clear bear flag breakdown after here. We should have a straight line down. I don't think it's going to be that simple this time around, unfortunately, especially as when you do look at other things like I've been looking at on my channel, the SPX, it just looks like we've got a long way to go down uh, until the bottom is in wow this SPX, SPX, this SPX fractal that I've been looking at is absolutely beautiful. We've been playing out to the teeth. But yeah, it is looking very, very worrying right now for Solana. A couple of major levels that we haven't mentioned so far in terms of our Fibonacci's that we've got are from this low to this high. You've got a 1.236 down here at $20. Not many supports on the volume profiles though. And then you've also got a 1.618 Fibonacci from this low to this high. And that yields the $12 Fibonacci target which I've been talking about for a very, very long time now. Um, on the weekly time frame, you can see this has been in play for about three weeks, this FIB. And we've previously talked about the $10 range. This is going to be a massive psychological level, 1.618. Uh, you come to a, a region where you don't have many supports on the volume clusters. So that would be a little bit concerning. And another reason why I think $10 is going to be a fairly decent target uh, to predict over on Solana. Now, uh, there's one other thing I want to show you in the higher time frames. This is not actually something that I personally think is in play or I, I don't necessarily like calling it what it is uh, but I have seen a couple of other bears mention this so I will just give it a mention if you want if you you know obviously formulate your own opinion on this I'm not of the opinion that this is a head and shoulders uh, but I've seen a lot of people say this is a head and shoulders so I just wanted to show you this you can make your own decision on this why I don't like this being uh, quote unquote head and shoulders is because over here you know, forget about the size of the move. You had like a 93% move. Over here, we had less of a move. I mean, we had about an 87% move. So what this shows me is, you know, this, if anything, should be the shoulder. And then you really can't connect these data points. I mean, you could try, yeah, I mean, even something like this, this would be a really ugly head and shoulders, but I'd say there's more weight in this uh, than weight in this one. So uh, with that being said, I'm not the biggest fan of this, but what I will say is, 
the trend line, the upper line of support is 100% valid. Down to $19, we do have a little bit of support floor built out. Uh, but what is worrying about this is in terms of in the immediate short term, the trend line starts to break down at... $32.70, which we're currently 20 cents above. So we're really, really close to this. And another reason why this is also worrying is, you know, forget if this is a head and shoulders or not. Like it really doesn't matter whether it's a head and shoulders or not. This upper line of support is 100% valid. And if you see a break beneath this and a weekly candle body close, uh, you're going to be having a bearish trend after, you know, this upper support has been bullish since the 22nd of February, 2021. So this trend line has been in place for like, 18 months, 19, 20 months, something like that. It's been playing out for a very long time. Yeah, 18 months. It's been playing out for 18 months, which is a very long time. And also coming into contact with this upper support line is the VPVR, this volume cluster, this support line. So this is what I'm saying. Yes, I don't see this as a head and shoulder, but the breakdown beneath this green box, the retest of this upwards sloping support that's been in play for 18 months, flipping as resistance at the $33 inflection point on the VPVR is going to rocket us down to probably the $16 range. Probably gonna have a bounce up to resistance $21 and then come down to where I actually think we're gonna bottom round about that $10 Solana. So so yeah, uh, I just did want to give you a quick update in the charts. Obviously, my TA targets have absolutely not changed. My perspective has not changed. Since the last prediction we made, we have started to come down from this. You can actually see we're predicting a 75% drop. And since this prediction that we made, we're down about 18%. We've been very choppy, but now I think the breakdown is really going to start taking play. So from where we are now, right now, my friends, another 70% drop. Don't take this as I need to short right now over the weekend. I do not recommend that. I think they're going to be bounces over the weekend. I do not just think we're going to trend down in a straight line like this. Really, really weak bounces and just go down. It's going to be volatile. We're probably going to come down to here. We're going to have a harsh bounce. We're going to have a harsh dump. We're going to have a harsh bounce, harsh, harsh dump, harsh harsh bounce and we're just going to be very choppy you know this is really what i see playing out and to wrap up the video with solana breaking down on the lower time frames you know there's a four hour bear flag we've broken down from daily time frame bear flag we've broken down from bitcoin's the same we've broken down from a daily bear flag which is this big move over here and on the four hourly time frame we've broken beneath this bear flag and we're starting to head down to our lower fibonacci regions i think twenty thousand is the next pit stop before a bounce and then another leg back down to the downside but with that being said, with Bitcoin heading down after this bear flag has been formed, Solana BTC has started to tip back down. And this looks like a bark pattern, ladies and gentlemen. You can see when Bitcoin, so this was the 18th, this was round about here as well. So you can see this is basically the inverse of Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin was forming a bear flag during this time. And while Bitcoin was in this bear flag, for some reason, Solana was outperforming. Uh, Solana had a run up against Bitcoin and we were forming this bull flag. Uh, but what I would like to say with this is, in my opinion, this looks more like a bar pattern to me uh, than a bull flag, although it does look like a very, very nice bull flag if I do say so myself. But the run up was just way too straight. The spiky hair at the top is a telltale sign. And also with any good bar pattern, just like you had that straight, beautiful run up, you're going to have a straight, beautiful run down. And this is where the worrying part comes in if you're a soul bull. Uh, I am in the higher time frames. I'm not in the lower time frames. As you can see, the last time we covered this chart, once again, about a month ago, we were predicting a 60% drop. We're already down about 4%. So another 56% drop to the downside to where I think Solana bottoms against Bitcoin. To where I think Solana bottoms against Bitcoin. But once again, if we look at the BART pattern, the BART pattern breakdown back down to the neckline would mean Solana would be underperforming or breaking down against Bitcoin by about 31.5 to 32%. This next leg to the downside on the Sol BTC chart is going to be absolutely brutal. With all that said, Sol in the lower time frames looks bearish. Sol BTC looks bearish. Bitcoin looks bearish. Sol is going to follow Bitcoin. Bitcoin's heading down. This is why the Sol BTC valuation is heading down and to wrap up the video one final
final reason why I think these lower price targets around about 12 are super valid is the Fibonacci, uh, is not the Fibonacci market structure, the Elliott wave market structure. You can see this is very clear. You've got your all time high up here, you've got your one wave, your two wave correction, three wave bearish impulse, four wave correction. And now we're in the five wave bearish impulse. If we come down to the daily time frame. I wouldn't even say that we're done with wave one. You know, I wouldn't have called this wave one. I wouldn't have called this a correctory wave. So I'd still say we're in wave one. I And once again, this does lend uh, a, the argument as to why we would have a big bounce coming. Maybe something like this. Maybe come down to once again, that $26 target that I mentioned, have a big bounce up to 32 and then keep on playing this out until we do come down to my $12 price target in terms of the Elliott wave. So Looking at this, we previously were able to predict the local bottom pretty well using this Fibonacci extension. Uh, the 0.618 of this move was down here at $28, and in the local time frame, we bottomed up just below 26. So this Fib beautifully called the next wave down, and the next Fib looking at this, your 1.236 is going to be coming in at $20.50. So this would be a beautiful leg to the downside. However, your 1.618 is all the way down here at $12. So this is really one for the bull. Let me know in the comments down below which one do you think is more conservative because both of these are valid uh, The Fibonacci's aren't saying we're 100% going to come to 12 or 100% going to come down to 20 uh, Elliott wave rather what they are saying is according to this Elliott wave theory the bottom should be between $20 and 50 cent and $12 I'm hedging my bets on the more bearish price target coming down to $12. Do you think $20 is in play? Do you think $12 is in play? Let me know down below. That is all I've got for you for Seoul today, my friends. Once again, I don't recommend trading over the weekends. This is really an update letting you know that we are breaking down into the next move. Uh, I'll keep you updated on this. Potentially, I'll make an update next week if we have another major move. But you know what I'm expecting? Another breakdown. My macro price targets have not changed. Dump it. That's all I've got for you today, my friends. And as always... Cowboy out. Peace.